This video is going to cover on how to upgrade a 3D Potter version 7 printer into a version 9 printer. We are going to be replacing the wire harness and the touchscreen interface with a new wireless design. First, we are going to remove the old wire harness. We can start by clipping all of the zip ties that hold it down. Also detach the limit switch wire from the Z-Rail on top of the machine. We will then unhook the motor connections and take the wire harness out of the grommet holder attached to the back plate. The grommet holder on the X-Rail may have epoxy over it. Some of the epoxy may need to be cut off with a sharp blade. As with the Z and Y-Rail limit switches, be sure to unplug the X-Rail limit switch. If the power connections on the motors are screwed in, you will need a small flathead screwdriver to undo these connections. Make sure that you are unscrewing the power connector from the motor and not the wires from the connector. The limit switch wire may be partially inside of the epoxy and needs to be removed. Be careful not to have the cable damaged. We can now remove the touchscreen interface from the printer. Before we put in the new harness, we need to change the setting switches on the motors. Version 9 3D Potter printers need to have the motor switches changed to have settings 3 and 4 on and all other numbers being off. These setting switches are covered by a small piece of tape which can easily be lifted up. Be sure to also change the switches on your extruder motor as well. As a side note, G-code files that print on version 7 printers will not work on version 9 printers. If you wish to reprint previous G-code files, you must re-slice them with new settings in slicing software, such as Simplify 3D. We can now install the new printer interface. On the bottom of the new control board, there should be a nut that can enter the back of the Z-Rail. The top of the control board will be screwed into the existing square nut used with the previous interface. Make sure to not over tighten these screws. They only have to be snug to hold the control board in place. We can now start zip tying the new harness to the machine, as well as plugging in limit switches and motor connections. In order to accommodate new cable lengths, you may need to turn the Z motor 90 degrees clockwise. This can be done by undoing the four screws that secure the motor, turning it, and then re-screwing in the motor. For the Z and Y motor, the cable connection that is closer to the control board plugs into the Z motor, and the one that is further down the wire harness plugs into the Y motor, as shown here. You can then insert the wire harness into the grommet holder and use more zip ties. Just as previously done, insert the wire harness into the X-Rail grommet holder, plug in the motors and the limit switch wire. You should then use a zip tie to hold the X-Rail limit switch wire out of the way. You can now place back any covers that were taken off. The machine is now fully upgraded and ready for use. Be sure that you use the new power supply that was included with your harness upgrade. For guides on how to connect to and use the new interface, check the links in the video description.